company in Alexander Hager and the CEO of a medium sized technology company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist, as well as a research engineer in telecommunications. Tonight, I would like to speak to you about one possible solution to the Ukrainian problem. In my previous discourse uh, from four days ago, that you can find on my YouTube channel, uh, you will see uh, that I made the point that there will be uh, an artillery line on the Russian side of about 10,000 pieces and on the Ukrainian side of 1,000 pieces. And that this, uh, and that with all of the funneling of weapons and readying and so forth, this is going to be an insurmountable and tractable problem for many, many months before enough weapons are manufactured and deployed into the Ukrainian theater to actually be able to stop the Russians. Because we start with this fact, uh, we have, uh, do not have the uh, artillery supplies or ammunition supplies to deliver 40,000 rounds a day on the battlefield the way Russia is doing. Um, it's a 10 to 1 ratio. So you can listen to my previous video about the military problem in Ukraine faces and the problem we're facing now of 300 to 1,000 men or, or, or people a day being injured or killed in this conflict in the Ukrainian a resistance and their armed forces and their militias. Um, so, you know, if you take that out 90 days, that's uh, uh, 90,000 people, 100,000 people, and uh, possibly uh, another 100 or $200 billion in property damage and disruption generally. Uh, and uh, that's not to uh, try to blackmail the Ukrainians uh, who don't want to cede their country, uh, but we have a fact here which uh, we could look at from the previous slide, I believe. Let me see if I can go back in. Where we see the election results for the pro Russian candidate who did one, Yanukovych, in 2010, and the pro Western candidate, uh, pro West Ukrainian candidate, Timoshenko, um, who won in the, the traditional ethnic Ukrainian heartland. These are more Russo-Ukrainian or Russian uh, uh, populations. So we have a natural cleavage here on the borders of Odessa, uh, Mykolaiv, uh, Zaporozhye, Kherson, Crimea. This is Dnepropetrovsk, Dnepropetrovsk uh, province, and we've got uh, uh, the Don uh, uh, Donetsk province, and then Luhansk province up here, and then Kharkiv province. So um, if you accepted that sort of as a talking point for this split between East Ukraine and West Ukraine, you could have a situation similar to at the end of the Second World War, where Germany was split into and ultimately did become one again, but only after 45 years. Um, so that is one possibility rather than arguing about um, uh, the, the, the other way to do this would be to prepare to besiege Luhansk and Donetsk and um, have to fight over whatever the Russians have their hands on at the time, which would be in this case, Kherson, Zaporozhye, about two thirds of it, and about 40% of Kharkiv province. Um, so, it's a way to try to conduct oneself forward, one of multiple different uh, options at the uh, strategy table. Um, I don't know what you think about it, uh, but um, even if you don't like it, it helps to flesh out the possible outcomes. Thank you.